When you launch Adobe Fresco, the first thing that you'll see is the home screen. Here you can create a new drawing or painting from scratch, which is what we'll do in this lesson. You can tap Import and Open to import an image from another location, such as Dropbox, or you can open images that you've recently worked on. Let's go ahead and start a new image by tapping on the Create New button. In this screen there are a variety of presets that you can choose from, or you can create a custom size. I'm going to tap on Print, and then I'll tap on the little arrow next to the word Poster down here, and I'll choose to switch to a landscape format. Then I'll tap on the poster icon to open up a blank document into Fresco. I'm going to start by going up to the Pixel Brush, and in the Favorites, I'm going to choose the Ink Stains. Now let me clarify that all of these brushes are found in different Pixel Brush groups, and I have added them to the Favorites in my version of the app. If you're using Fresco for the first time, you won't see any brush favorites here. The Ink Stains brush can be found in the FX brushes. I'm going to tap on the color chip, and I'm going to use this color wheel here to dial in a bluish green color, something like that. Then I'm just going to paint over the center of the image to add that in there. I'm using a pretty big brush. It's about 1,800 pixels. I'll tap on that color chip again, and I'm going to get more of a violet color. We'll add some of that in. Go back to that color chip, and let's get some orange color in there. And then finally, let's come here and get some yellow color to put in there. So just a blend of different colors. All right, that looks good. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the pixel brush again, and I'm going to choose this gritty brush that I had earlier saved to my favorites. I'm not going to actually paint with the gritty brush. I'm going to use it as an eraser. Now, there is an eraser tool in Fresco, but it doesn't really have a lot of character. It just erases. Now, of course, sometimes you need to have that, and it's very useful that it's there, but what I like to do is use a brush and turn it into an eraser, and I can do that by holding down the touch shortcut in the lower left. So when I do that, my brush is going to become an eraser, and I can erase with all the interesting edge characteristics of that brush. So let me just make this brush a little bit bigger, and I'm going to try to use this eraser brush to define the shape of a bottle. Layers and layer masks are very useful when creating an illustration in Adobe Fresco, because parts of a drawing can be organized on separate layers for greater flexibility. This makes it very easy to modify the different components of your drawing. In this illustration, there are four layers for the astronaut. We have the color layer, and the ink outlines layer, and also layers for the reflections on the helmet and the tether. I want to scale and rotate the astronaut, so I need to put these four layers into a layer group so I can transform them at the same time. To create a layer group, I'm going to take the thumbnail for the ink outlines layer and drag it onto the color layer, and you can see how that's created a layer group. Next, I'll add in the Helmet Reflections layer and the Tether layer. To see the contents of a layer group, just double tap on its thumbnail, and you can work with the layers there if you need to. To return to the view of the main layer stack, just tap the little back button at the top of the layer group. So with the Astronaut layer group selected, I'm going to come over to the toolbar and select the Move and Transform tool so I can transform all these layers in the group. I just want to scale this a little bit smaller, so I'll use a two-finger gesture to do that, and maybe rotate it a little bit. I could use the handle at the bottom to rotate, and of course I could also use the corner handles if I wanted to scale this proportionally as well. All right, that looks pretty good. One other thing to draw your attention to is the flip horizontal and flip vertical buttons up in the upper right. I'll tap Done here. And next what I want to do is work with the small moon in the lower right. This moon is part of a layer that has several different elements on it, so let me make that layer active and tap on the layer visibility button a couple times so you can see what's on that layer. What I want to do is move the moon up to its own layer so I can work with it separately. So to do that, I'm going to come to the toolbar and select the lasso tool, and I'll draw a lasso selection around the moon. 
When there's an active selection, the Selection Actions bar will appear at the bottom of the interface, offering different options for working with a selection. To move the selected item up to a new layer, I'm going to go over to the Layer Taskbar on the right side and tap on the More Options button, that's the three dots here, and I'm going to choose Cut Selection. Next, I'll go back to that same menu, and I'll choose Paste Selection. Some of the coolest features in Adobe Fresco are the groundbreaking live brushes that emulate not just the look, but also the behavior and the paint mixing qualities of watercolors and oil paints. Let's explore some of the ways that the oil painting engine in Fresco creates realistic oil brush strokes with colors that blend together like actual oil paints. The oil brushes are found in the live brushes, which is the second brush tool in the toolbar. Down at the bottom of the toolbar, you can find the options for those brushes. You have an option to change the size of the brush. Then there's the flow setting, and perhaps the best way to explain what flow does is that it controls how much paint is loaded onto the brush. And to give you an idea what that looks like, I have a layer here that I've already prepared using two different flow settings. So the blue brush stroke on the left was made with a flow setting of 10, and the brush stroke on the right was made with a flow setting of 50. So you can see how those differences have affected the characteristics of each stroke, as well as how much paint was put down on the canvas. Let me just tap on the visibility icon to turn that layer off. And let's go down to the brush settings now. There's a variety of different settings here you can experiment with and see what they do. One thing to take note of is the pressure dynamic setting, which will control how the Apple Pencil interacts with the iPad when you're using that. So you can have the size and the flow moderated by how much pressure you're using with the Apple Pencil on the iPad. The watercolor brushes in Adobe Fresco provide incredibly realistic brush and wet color results that do an amazing job of mimicking all of the blending subtleties of the watercolor medium. Let's check out some of the important settings and brush characteristics so you can get started creating your own watercolor paintings. Tap on the live brushes in the toolbar to access the watercolor brushes. I'm just going to leave this set to the watercolor round detail brush. The tool options for the watercolor brushes can be found down at the bottom of the toolbar. There's the usual brush size option. Below that is flow, which controls how much paint is on the brush and influences the intensity and the translucency of the color that you apply. So in order to explore that, let me just do a long press on the woman's hair to sample some of that color with the eyedropper. And I will set the flow down fairly low maybe to about 20. And let's use a larger brush here. I'm going to zoom up so we can see what's going on. And I'll add a few brush strokes on her hair using that low flow setting. So you can see what the result is there. Next, I'm going to turn the flow setting up higher. Maybe I'll go up to about 55. And we'll add some more brush strokes. And you can see the difference. You can see how the Color intensity is much more pronounced with that higher flow value there.
Multicolor selection is a powerful new feature in Adobe Fresco that will open up a world of possibilities for artists. Any pixel brush or live watercolor brush can be used to sample literally any area of the canvas to create a new multicolor swatch. The swatch is added to the color history and immediately loaded onto the brush, allowing for a wide range of painting effects. Here are just a few of them. To the right of the canvas, you'll see a variety of swatches I've painted in Fresco. By using the touch modifier with one finger, I can select any area of canvas with my other finger and instantly create a multicolor swatch. Zooming allows me to control the size of the area I'm selecting, which makes it very easy to control. Now, all I have to do is paint with whatever brush I'm using, and voila, multicolor magic. Now, since this feature works with any pixel brush, there are thousands of possibilities. For example, watch how fun it is for me to use multicolor for spatter. Or even multicolor halftone dots.